be seated. And let's pray together. Father in heaven, you are worthy of glory. You are worthy of all glory as we come before you now. Lord, we come before you now as we remember your son. We want to glorify you by remembering your son rightly, for remembering who he is and what he did when he went to a cross for those who would believe in him. Lord, I pray for us. I pray that you would help us as we examine your word, give us eyes to see your son for who he truly is. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, as we come to our time around the Lord's table today, we're going to be looking at a passage in which, in which Jesus shows how committed he was to the Father's design to save sinners. So if you have a Bible with you, would you turn with me to Luke chapter 22? Luke 22. We're going to be looking at verses 41 to 45 together. If you don't have the Bible, some men are coming down the aisles, just raise their hand and they'll get one to you. If you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to take this Bible for yourself so that you can begin reading God's word on your own. The setting here in our passage this morning is the night before the crucifixion. Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he has taken his eight disciples to be there with him his 12, after taking the uh, Passover meal. He's left eight of the disciples at the entryway to the garden, and he has taken Peter and James and John with him farther into the garden. As we read this passage, we want to take note of three things. We want to take note in verse 42, what it is that has Jesus in such a state of agony. And in verse 43, we want to notice the Father's provision to Jesus in that agony. And then down in verse 45, we want to see Jesus' response to the Father's provision. So let's read verses 41 to 45 together. And Jesus withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him, and being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. In verse 42, we see what it is that has Jesus in such a state of agony, and that's the Father's cup. This cup is God's response to man's sin. It's what is due from God to sinful man, just like wages are due to a servant from the master who employs him. And Jesus understood exactly what this was. He understood this exactly. He knew that he was going to be on the receiving end or the Father's avenging wrath that he would pour out against all of those who would believe in him as their Savior and their Lord. But not only did he knew exactly what this was, he knew exactly how severe this was going to be. In Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 13, Jesus describes God's judgment this way. He describes it as a furnace of fire, a place where there is weeping and there's gnashing of teeth. Jesus was fully aware that he would experience in one day what the unforgiven sinner would experience for eternity in a lake of fire. So he knew this. This was the cup that had Jesus in such a state of agony. But we see the Father's provision to Jesus in verse 43. At this point, the Father and the Son were still in a position of perfect unity, a unity that they had enjoyed since all eternity past. But the Father knows all about Jesus' agony. He knows all about it. And so he dispatches an angel to strengthen Jesus. Our passage doesn't tell us exactly what that is involved, but we do know from Scripture that angels are messengers and that angels are ministers. They bring words of truth from God, and they bring ministering help in times of need. And this was a time of need for Jesus. Because on one hand, the Father was committed to his design to save and reconcile sinful man to himself through the atoning sacrifice of his son. And on the other hand, his son needed help as he prepared for that task of being the atoning sacrifice. So to accommodate both of those things, the Father lovingly sends an angel to Jesus to fortify him for that task. And so we see the response of Jesus in verse 45 
after he prays, he rises from the ground and he returns to his disciples. But to understand the weight of that and the effect of that, we need to back up to verse 44, where we see that the appearance of the angel doesn't remove the trial from Jesus. The Father is still committed to his design to save the sinner through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. The appearance of the angel doesn't change that at all. The agony and the fervent prayer and the sweat that falls like drops of blood to the ground, those things continue after the angel appears to Jesus. What this helps us see is that with the help of the angel, Jesus was fighting hard. He was fighting very, very hard to prepare himself for the trial that was coming, the suffering on the cross. And we see that Jesus was victorious in that fight when we look at verse 45. The word rose in verse 45 speaks of moving from one place to another. And specifically, it describes the action of one who has prepared themselves for a journey. Jesus understood exactly what that journey was. He knew that it was a journey that would culminate in his hanging on a cross where he would suffer the mighty wrath of God against everyone who would believe in him as their Savior and their Lord. And that's what we want to remember about Jesus this morning. We should remember Jesus this morning as the one who prepared himself thoroughly for a, a suffering that is beyond our ability to comprehend. So if you're here this morning and Jesus is your Savior and your Lord, we encourage you to remember Jesus that way this morning. When the elements come to you, take them and hold them. And remember Jesus' commitment to his Father's design for salvation, that he would be willing to go to a cross and suffer the way he would so that we could enjoy reconciliation to a holy God. And when you prepared your hearts, take the elements on your own when you're ready. If you're here this morning and Jesus is not your Savior, he's not your Master, he's not your Lord, perhaps you know things about Jesus, perhaps you know a lot about Jesus, but he's not one for whom you have ultimate allegiance, he's not one that you love, he's not one that you submit yourself to. Please understand that this is a time for Christians. This is a time for Christians to remember exactly what Jesus did for them. So as the elements come to you, just take them and pass them by to the next person, but use this time well. Use this as a time to think carefully about how it is that God avenges himself against the sin of everyone. He avenges himself either by pouring out his wrath on his son when his son was on the cross for everyone who would trust in him, or there's a lake of fire that awaits those who reject Jesus throughout their life. I would love to talk with any of you who have questions. Any of the other elders would also. At the end of the service, we'll be available. We would love to explain to you what it looks like, what it feels like, what it's like to follow Jesus as our Savior and Lord. So men, come and serve us, and I'll return and pray in just a few minutes.